Now the next statue, we are moving on from Sir John Burgoyne and down our trip to Curzon. Now we get a little chilly feeling because this is the statue to Sir John Franklin and the Franklin Expedition to find the Northwest Passage, which at the time, due to the amount of ice, did not exist. And now due to some rather calamitous changes to the weather, there are ships that can break through it and there are icebreakers that can make it. But at the time, um, Franklin was bringing the Terror and the Erebus, which the Terror is a great series that I highly recommend. Um, there's a lot of interesting content out there on uh, the Franklin Expedition. And it's, it's such an interesting and mysterious expedition. And, um, you know, we, for so long, we didn't know what happened to them. We still don't know what happened to a lot of them, but they went off into the ice and they never came back. Um, they, their ships were caught in the ice. Uh, they attempted time and again to um, free the ship from the ice. And some of them went overland uh, to try to find safety. Um, but Sir John died out on the ice. And this, uh, this plaque in the front actually commemorates uh, when Sir John died and they had the crew assembled for the funeral. Um, it was a technologically advanced expedition. They had some of the best ships in the world, both of which had actually made Arctic and Antarctic expeditions. Uh, they had tinned food, which may or may not have led to their demise. Um, and they had um, some very experienced explorers. Sir John had actually made two other attempts to find the Northwest Passage in 1819 and 1825. And I guess he didn't like the cold because he served as Lieutenant Governor of Van Diemen's Land off Australia, and uh, which is now Tasmania? Yes. Um, and then again, after he got some sun, went in 1845 to uh, serve aboard HMS Erebus and explore the Northwest Passage. And I just love this monument because it, it's, uh, it's so nautical. It has the, the knots, it has the oak leaves, um, and it has Sir John dressed not only in his uniform but with his, his fur coat um, in the dressed for the Arctic with the anchor there. There's, there's, there's so many interesting things about this. He had the Royal Guelphic Order for his other expeditions. He's another melancholy figure. And since we are in a melancholy and cold mood, we are going to go from the North Pole across Waterloo Place to the South Pole. And just know that if you don't finish in first place and you finish in second place, you can still have something named after you if you die. Because we know <laughs> the, that the South Pole is the Admonton Scott Center and Admonson, the Norwegian explorer, first made it to the South Pole. But five weeks later, uh, Robert Falcon Scott also made it to the South Pole. But Admonson made it out alive, and Scott did not. And he and his small expedition died out on an ice shelf in Antarctica. Um, though they found a rescue party found their equipment and their photographs, and we know that they made it to the South Pole as well. Um, but that's Robert Falcon Scott.
Now over here we're going to go into the center of Waterloo Place to see a king. And here is King Edward the Seventh, the namesake of the Edwardian era, the son of Queen Victoria, dressed in a very uh, martial uniform, dressed as a field marshal um, in his dress uniform. And I think it's very interesting to, to consider all the different uh, ways in which people are portrayed. Sometimes they're portrayed in their uniform. Um, of course, Edward never held any battlefield commands, but he's portrayed in his uniform. Um, there are others here portrayed in uniform. Uh, some are in their dress uniforms. Some are in, you know, what they would wear when they were out in the field. Sir Colin Campbell actually isn't in his dress uniform. He's in an undress, um, very similar to what would become the patrol jacket, but in a, a private purchase um, uh, undress uniform coat. And a lot of these men are in their, their field uniforms rather than being in a full dress uniform. But Edward VII, fully kitted out, um, plumed hat and all, and he remains in the middle here. Um, Edward VII, Rex Imperator because he was also king of Great Britain and Ireland and emperor of India, like his mother. So that's Edward VII, and we're going to go over to the newest of the monuments here in Waterloo Place, because this is Air Chief Marshal Sir Keith Park, who commanded the Royal Air Force um, during the Second World War and was key to the, the defense of London uh, during the Battle of Britain. Um, he was a New Zealander and was made famous as a uh, flying ace during the First World War and eventually was commanding the Royal Air Force to defend London during her darkest hour. Sir Keith was actually portrayed by Trevor Howard in uh, the Battle of Britain. Sir, that's Air Vice Marshal Park. That's all we need now. Good afternoon, sir. Tell your men to relax. <laughs> I love Trevor Howard. He, he portrayed the uh, uh, Lord Cardigan in the Charge of the Light Brigade. And he is, he is just the the perfectly arrogant and perfidious uh, gentleman, gentleman soldier. Um, but I, I love uh, his portrayal of Sir Keith Park as well. Now here we're at the Athenaeum, and outside the Athenaeum is actually something that the Duke of Wellington requested to be installed. He um, asked that these horse blocks be installed on either side of the street so that he could more easily dismount his horse um, as he was um, aging. They, they were installed in 1830, um, and he was already getting up there in 1830. So that is the collection of statuary in the other part of Waterloo Place, and we are finally going to go to my favorite part and talk about the Crimean War Memorial.